Joining me now is Priyanka Vergadia, a customer engineer at Google Cloud, who's going to show us how to develop for Kubernetes without leaving your IDE. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to talk about Kubernetes and how developers can work within the Visual Studio environment and deploy applications into Kubernetes. So let's jump right in. Great. Cool. So I have on the left-hand side my terminals, which we are going to use to do some deployments. And then on the right here, I have um, a Visual Studio code. So we're going to start off by creating um, a new application. Um, I'm going to just create a Hello World Node.js application, nothing fancy. Um, um, so what's happening here is um, we should be able to see our application created. Uh, once I refresh, it is showing up my application. I have the source files. Um, the front end and the back end are the different services that are in this application. In the front end, uh, we have the uh, 8080 port that's listening to the front end. It's talking to the back end on back end service address. And in the back end, uh, we have the index file that's also um, talking to 8080. So we're going to change that to 8081 so that we can we don't have a port conflict. And then at this point, if we go into uh, go and start these services, I'm going to just check where we are in our terminal. We are at the right place in the front end folder, and we want to do the same for our back end as well. So I'm going to go into the right folder, um, which is the Hello World Node.js application too. And then, so we're now in backends and front-end folders. Now, if we run npm install, that's going to get us all the dependencies that it needs to, um, to run, the, run both our front-end and back-end services. And then once that is done, we need to start these services. So. Our back end is running on 8081 and our front end is running on 8080. So we're ready to test our application. Um, our back end is on 8081 and our front end is on 8080 talking to our back end. So we have an application that's running through Visual Studio Code. Um, now at this point, if I wanted to deploy this application into, uh, into GKE, I would first need a cluster to create. Um, and then once the cluster is created, then I can start deploying this application. So let's see how we, how we can create a cluster from within Visual Studio Code. I have the extension for, um, for uh, Visual Studio Code called uh, GKE extension. And once you download that extension, you'll start to see your projects and your clusters in, the, in your IDE environment. Um, I'm going to just use my current, um, one of the current projects and create um, create a cluster in the current project. So my current project is KQ demo. And so we'll set that as a project ID. And then I will, it gives me an option to select the zones. And then um, here we're just going to say test as a cluster name. And then there's the number of uh, nodes that you want to create that you can change. And then also the machine types. We're just going to go with the standard and click create. Once I do that, it takes uh, maybe three to four minutes to actually create the cluster. It's spinning up all these instances in Google Cloud for you. And um, if I refresh this, you should be able to, to see that it's starting to bring up the test cluster right here. It's orange because it's not set up yet. So give it a few minutes and it starts to set up. Um, at this point, um, we're going to just use for the demo purpose a cluster that I already have created, and we'll go through the demo uh, using that cluster. Now, once I have the cluster, I'm ready to deploy, um, and I need a scaffold YAML to actually deploy in the cluster. Okay, and for those who might not have heard of Scaffold, what, what is that? So Scaffold is basically a command line tool that lets you define your um, a Kubernetes manifest. It also defines the container registries and then um, for the back end and the front end and spe especially for our application here. So if you have a large number of uh, uh, services that are running in your application, you would define your container registry addresses in there and would pick up um, from from those uh, from those addresses and deploy your uh, service in GKE. Great. Yeah. So let's see an example of that. So I'm just first going to go through deployment. Um, I think I forgot to set the cluster. So let's first set this cluster. Once it is set, then we're going to deploy. Um, take the deploy. And do that. 
starting to deploy. While it's deploying, let's look at our scaffold YAML. This is the YAML I was talking about where you have the back end and the front end and the gcr.io addresses, which is the container registry address, and then the manifest for your Kubernetes. Um, and it seems like we have our application deployed. So let's see the IP address. That's the IP address of our application. Um, it's the one that we just created. Um, and we see that the application is working on port 4000. So our front end is talking to our back end, both of them now deployed on a GKE cluster. So we did all of that from our IDE and um, um, yeah. That's fantastic. Um, I guess the next step that I would think of is making changes to, let's say, our back end without affecting our front end. So for example, what if I want to test to make sure that my change doesn't break anything without needing to redeploy, redeploy and rebuild? That's a great point because um, as a, in a development life cycle, that's the biggest um, you know, hurdle. You, you test, you, de uh, you develop, you test, and then you want to deploy that. But, but, but the test stage is a very critical stage. So you would use something called telepresence for that. And telepresence is, again, a command line tool that helps you create a proxy. So in this case, in this example, what we're going to do is create a proxy and create our and run our back end on local machine, and then our front end would continue to run on our GK cluster in production. So we're able to test the changes to our back end, but our front end stays intact. Okay. So let's great. see that. Yeah. So in this case here, so when you come out of this and let's see where we are, um, I want to go into the application that we just deployed, which is this. And let's make a little bit of a change here in our front end application uh, so that we can use a little bit of a, so but we, I just called it version two for our backend. Um, and at this point, if I run my telepresence command, which is nothing but it creates a proxy um, and it's going to run it on port So here it is, it's forwarding the ports now. And if we go test our backend um, in, on our local machine, that's going to version two, and uh, it should uh, work the same way from our front end as well. So um, that's, that's pretty much how it works. Very impressive. So we were not only able to see you being able to redeploy uh, using your local IDE to GKE using cloud code and scaffold, but you were also able to make changes locally to a single service, test it, and then again, redeploy to GKE once more. Pretty powerful, using, yeah. Yeah, telepresence. Okay, well, thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you for having me.